today I'm going to give away a free t-shirt, bring you Comic Hero Turn Out Show Off Fight, bring you comics news, and reveal the books I bought this week. How y'all doing? I'm Victor, and you are watching a Comic Hero Show. Now check that logo! This week's edition of the Comic Hero Show. I'm your host Victor Nolly, and I am the Comic Hero. And I want to thank everyone that came out to um, the BPL Blast Off at the Bossier Parish Library in Bossier City last weekend. Um, because there was so much going on, and I had to uh, give away free cups and free car stickers, I wasn't able to do a split edition of the Comic Hero Show like I promised. However, it's a good thing that I did because. I just came up with this great idea for a summer theme. And that summer theme is superheroes. And um, in this episode, and in the other 12 episodes that are, gonna, that are to come, I'm going to wear superhero themed comic hero tees. And I couldn't think of anyone better to start off with than the Man of Steel himself, Superman. So this is a comic hero, uh, a Superman comic hero tee. And to go along with it, the Superman hat. And um, there are several other. Um, superhero comic hero tees that I have uh, but I can't really decide on, on what I want to uh, go with next so that's where y'all come in so y'all are going to help me decide on what shirt I'm going to wear for the rest of the summer it's going to be fun I, um, I, I always love y'all's input so yeah alright it's time to get away a free t-shirt Last week's episode, I asked, who is the only comic book character to age in real time with their publication? Well, the correct answer is John Constantine. Now, I gave some um, hints on social media. The first hint was that he had his own show on NBC that was on for one season, the 2014-2015 year, before it got canceled, and then ever since then, he's been on uh, DC's Legends of Tomorrow. And the second clue I gave was that he was played by Matt Ryan. And the third clue that I gave was that Keanu Reeves starred as a, in a movie called Constantine back in 2005. Well, the correct answer is John Constantine. Seven people have answered correctly, and because they've answered correctly, her name's been entered in a drawing for a free tee. And that drawing takes place right now. So, the winner of the free tee for this week's episode of the show is... Jay Salvucci from Bossier City, Louisiana. So, congratulations, Jay. Give yourself a free comic hero tee. All right, here's the question for next week's episode, and this is a Thor question. What is the name of the rite of passage between Asgard and Midgard? Everyone who answers correctly will be entered a drawing for a free tea in next week's episode of the show. All right, now D'Angelo Blue from Youngstown, Ohio has requested a comic hero thrown on a showdown fight, and this one features two marvelous characters. Well, one of them's marvelous, one of them kind of the dark side of marvelous. Representing DC, we have Black Adam. And representing Marvel, we have Captain Marvel. These two are going to duke it out in a segment I like to call... The, the Comic, Comic Hero, Hero Throwdown Showdown. Welcome to the Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown. Today, it's Black Adam versus Captain Marvel. Black Adam possesses superhuman stamina and invulnerability, superhuman speed and flight, superhuman strength, genius level intellect and wise judgment, Full control and emission of magical lightning and thunder, unlimited courage and proficient hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, and longevity. Captain Marvel possesses superhuman strength, speed, endurance and stamina, energy projection and absorption, and flight. Who will win? These two will be evenly matched for the most part. It will mostly be hand-to-hand -hand combat. Due to Black Adam's wise judgment, he'd had the upper hand. After delivering a series of punches and kicks to Captain Marvel, Black Adam attempts to deliver the final blow via magical lightning. This proves to be his undoing because Captain Marvel absorbs all the energy from the lightning and fires it back at Black Adam. This results in the latter converting back to his Tenth Adam form. He tries to get back into the fight by yelling Shazam, but Captain Marvel knocks him out cold after he says half a syllable. Captain Marvel wins, and that concludes this fight 
on the Comic Heroes Rodown Showdown. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that fight. I'll have another one for next week. Now it's time for Comic Week Speaking, so without further ado, let's talk comics! All right, there are three things we're going to talk about in this segment of Comic Week Speaking, and the first one is uh, the news that in the next phase of Marvel Studios, Doctor Doom will be one of the villains. So that lets you know that if Doctor Doom is going to be one of the villains, the chances are there's going to be a Fantastic Four movie. Now, just like I hope uh, Marvel Studios will um, will do the Fantastic Four some justice, I hope they do Doctor Ju Doctor Doom some justice. And what I mean by that, don't tell Doctor the ultimate version of Doctor Doom's origin. Don't use that. Because that is the, one of the most pathetic origins I've ever heard. Doctor Doom, Doctor Doom didn't get his powers the same way the Fantastic Four did. We, I mean, everyone that that reads comics knows knows that he got his origin. He, Victor Von Doom became Doctor Doom because of, of a of a machine that the thing tampered with while while they while while he. Doom and Reed were still in college. Well, the, ex the machine exploded. He ended up getting he ended uh, he ended up becoming disfigured. He ends up getting uh, kicked out of college, and then he ends up um, somewhere overseas in, in Tibet, and then he ends up practicing uh, dark magic, and then forges a new suit with a mask. That's how he becomes Doom. I mean, this other thing with him being hit by cosmic rays, just like the Fantastic Four. That's the ultimate. That's that's the ultimate version. That's the origin of the ultimate Doctor. Uh, the the ultimate Doctor Doom, and that origin was complete trash. Yeah, I said it. All right, now the second thing, Riri Williams is said has been rumored to debut in the uh, the next phase of the Marvel movies, and she's going to become Ironheart. Now, in the comics, this actually did happen when Tony Stark was presumed dead. And, but there were some folks that were crying foul over this because they think if anyone deserves to become the next Iron Man or, or the second coming of, 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 of armored suit uh, characters, it should be Tony and Pepper's daughter, Morgan. Here's the thing. Morgan is still like a toddler. So, it, 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 and I think it would only make sense for um, Riri to become Ironheart. Because in the comics, she becomes Ironheart right after she gets kicked out of MIT because she had gotten caught using uh, using facsimiles of, Stark, of Tony Stark's technology. Only to be reinstated in the college after, she's, after she helped save the world. And then even though Tony Stark came back from the dead, um, she he encouraged Riri to 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 take to still be Ironheart, but to forge a new suit. So um, I think this is I honestly think this is a great idea. I mean, all these folks that are saying it's a bad idea, well, they obviously don't read comics. Let's, I'm, I'm I'm just gonna say that. All right, now the third thing. And I'm very excited about this. Spider Gwen is set to come to the to arrive and and be part of the brand, be part of the uh, the regular Marvel universe in her own in a new series coming out, simply called Ghost Spider. Really excited about this. I love how she um, interacted with with some of the Spider-based characters in a regular Marvel Universe, like the OG Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Miles Morales, um, Silk, uh, the Jessica Drew Spider-Woman. And I, I, I just can't, I just can't say enough how, how great an idea this is. And my only concern though is how is she gonna coexist with, with Peter? 
because you, you have to remember, the Gwen Stacy of the regular Marvel Universe um, died right after Spider-Man tried to save her from after the Green Goblin threw her right off the Brooklyn Bridge. And, um, or was it the Washington Bridge? It was either Brooklyn Bridge or Washington Bridge. It was one of the, it was one of those bridges. And he tried to, he, and Spidey tried to save her, but it, but accidentally snaps her neck. And, um, I mean, that's the one thing that I'm really looking forward to. I mean, how is that, how is she going to coexist with Peter? Because, you know, because in um, some of the uh, the, the, the Spider-Man events like uh, Spider-Geddon, Spider-Verse, uh, and, and and others, every time Spider-Gwen got near him, he 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 was all he he, he was on his feels. So um, we're looking for, but other than that, I'm really looking forward to it. Very excited about Gwen being part of the regular Marvel universe. And it's going to be awesome. All right, that's it for Comic Week Speaking. Now let's get to the comics I bought this week. Comic books I bought this week. All right, first up is Spider Gwen Ghost Spider. Now this is um, a trade paperback, but it can, but it consists of the first four issues of Spider Gwen Ghost Spider. So this is issues one through four. Spider Gwen Ghost Spider number five. The Superior Spider Man number six. Miles Morales Spider Man number six. The Amazing Spider-Man number 22. Heroes in Crisis number 9. Tony Stark Iron Man number 11. Wonder Woman number 77. Action Comics number 1011. As Guardians of the Galaxy number 9. Avengers number 19. The Flash number 71. Iron Heart number 6. Thor number 13. Fantastic Four number 10. And finally, the Immortal Hulk number 18. All right, that's 19. Which brings the total number of comics that I've bought since December of 1997 to 9,372. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Here's a question again for a free tea for next week's episode of the show. What is the name of the rite of passage between Asgard and Midgard? Everyone who answers correctly will be entered in a drawing for a free tea on next week's episode of the show. And congratulations to James Salvucci from Bossier City, Louisiana, who won a free tea on this week's episode. And speaking of next week, 
the summer of superheroes continues and um there are quite a few shirts that i'm um that i made well superhero comic hero tees um to be exact and i'm gonna need some help deciding on uh what tees uh, or what tees that i um that i'm going to that i'm gonna wear for episode 257 so um but here's here's some of the shirts that i made i made the flash x-men wolverine green lantern of course green lantern that was the shirt that i wore at the BPO Blast Off this past weekend. Um, Shazam, Hawkeye, Hulk, Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor, just to name a few. If y'all have any suggestions um, for a team that I, and, and it wasn't one that I've, uh, that I've named already, feel free to let me know. Um, I, I wanna thank Mike Hart for uh, Monroe because earlier today when I posted that I was gonna do this throughout the summer, he suggested Swamp Thing, and you know what? I don't see why not. I'm going to, um, so I'm going to uh, make a Swamp Thing comic hero tee uh, in, the, in the near future and um, post it on social media. And I'll let, and if, if a lot of folks like it, I'll wear it on a future episode this summer. All right, I'm Victor Nolley on a comic hero. I'll see you next week for episode 257. So until then, be safe. Be blessed, be a hero!